Any Good Thing is proudly underwritten by Bashwinger Insurance Agency, Amsterdam, New York. Hello, and welcome to Episode 13 of Any Good Thing, performed at the Creative Connections Art Center in Amsterdam, New York. In our last episode, Charity asked for a little space to cope with Derek and his illness and ended their courtship. And Derek went to Dr. Lowry to straighten out his meds and get a little advice on how to proceed on his own. On the way through the park after his session, Derek met Sandra and proceeded to tell her everything. We see them when he is finished. I guess that was a whopper. So, you are without a girlfriend once again, huh? Par for the course, I'd say. Why do you always insult me? Are you trying to break me down? Not very friendly. Of course it's friendly. It's all how you take it. Did you ever hear the adage, all's well that ends well? My insults are more like advice, and you should accept it as such, and build on it, or don't accept it and perish. But I will not sugarcoat anything just to suit you. Seems your girlfriend did enough of that already. One thing I won't do is allow you to disparage Charity. She is a good woman. Woman? I'm a woman, full of wisdom beyond my years, maturity... And pigeons for friends. Well, there's you. You know, Derek, I am harsh to you because that's my way, and because I think you need it. There must be a woman in your life besides Charity, right? My mom and sister. And no men? I just have my Heavenly Father to guide me. How about someone real? I'll let that one slide. My dad's passed away, no brothers. The closest one was John, my brother-in-law. But he and my sister are separated. I see a pattern. You need more men in your life, Derek. Not your doctor, but friends, someone to feed off of. I'd prefer women. I thought you'd like this kinder, gentler side of me. But phooey, I've listened to your story and offered timely advice and put up with the likes of you. But I'm now tired, so off the bench. I'll catch up with you next time you have an existential crisis. Bye, Derek. Sandra, as always. Derek leaves and wends his way home, picking the long way, the way that avoided going by Charity's house. God, I often wonder if anyone who tells me anything is divinely inspired, or are they just wasting my time? Or do I have to be so sharp in my distinctions? I guess too much and know so little. Where would that be in your word? Charity stifles a tear, driving to work and thinking of her time with Derek. She thinks a moment and talks to God. God? Remember me? I've talked to you before, but I don't know if you heard or cared. No, this is not about me. It's about Derek, your supposed son. Yes, he is in trouble, I think, and he just can't get out of his own way. We broke up, and he is probably taking it hard, like always, and needs your help. But not like the help you've given him all along. That was useless. He needs something new and real. Something that will enable him to lift his head and take a look around him and see as many gifts come to fruition. Something he doesn't have now. I want him to be well and think that nothing a human could do can help. He needs you to step up. He needs healing. That's what I think he needs. What do you think? Penny for your thoughts. As for me, you know what I want. She parks at her building and goes right to her recording booth and pre prepares for her next interview. Derek enters his apartment and sits on the sofa, places his Bible on his lap, and reads a passage from the book of the second letter of Peter. By his divine power, he has lavished on us all the things we need for life and for true devotion, through the knowledge of him who has called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, the greatest and priceless promises have been lavished on us, that through them you should share the divine nature and escape the corruption rife in the world through disordered passion. With this in view, do your utmost to support your faith with goodness, goodness with understanding, understanding with self-control, self-control with perseverance, perseverance with devotion, devotion with kindness to the brothers, and kindness to the brothers with love. The possession and growth of these qualities will prevent your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ from being ineffectual and unproductive. I know I have allowed my injuries and illness to affect my decisions, especially where she is concerned, but I would like to believe that I may be coming out of it soon, and I can seek the best gifts again, Lord willing. Like I always ask, help me. I need your help, and protect my loved ones, and I will seek your glory. He closes the Bible and ponders, 
Then call Deacon Wallens. Hello, Deacon. Yes, Derek? Do you have time to talk now? For a few minutes. Uh, what's on your mind? The doctor is adjusting my meds and told me to stay out of any more romantic entanglements. Good. That's sound advice, especially in light of recent events. So, I'm reading in 2 Peter where it says God gave us promises to help us and to add virtue to virtue so we can be better Christians. But it's not always that easy. Is that a question? No. My question is how do I succeed at making myself better? Well, first, the promises of God are meant to inspire us to betterment to awaken desire in us from God's spirit, to find our way to him, and improve our understanding of the mysteries of Christ. As for the virtues listed in that passage, all of them proceed from God, and like all blessings can only be accepted through God. I think this time has been given to you so that you could more solidify your relationship with God and then add virtues as he gives you strength and opportunity. Remember, Christ said, to seek first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things will be added to you. I took that out of context, but I think that applies. Yes, I think so. Thanks, Deacon. Will, will I see you at Mass uh, this Sunday? I will try. Mayor Montgomery arrives for her interview. Good morning, Mayor. Thanks for coming. Thank you for inviting me back. Do you want headphones? No, thank you. Let's begin then. Three, two, one. Welcome to Downtown Radio at 5. This is Charity Rodriguez. My guest today is Amsterdam's Mayor, Mayor Montgomery. Welcome, Mayor. Thanks for having me. Mayor, could you fill the listeners in on the news of Councilman Edwards' apparent arrest yesterday? Yes, uh, very sad. The councilman evidently stole money from his re-election campaign. The Democratic Committee learned of it recently, and when Edwards refused any assistance from the party, we had to sort of step back and let the process uh, play out. What happens next? The Board of Elections law is not always enforced with great seal, but Mr. Edwards needs to make right on this one, not because of what the law says, but because of the many good people who donated their hard-earned money to get him elected as an upstanding individual and as representative of their interests. What has to happen now? There would have to be a public apology, there would have to be money, be money returned, and then the council could decide to sanction him. But just for the man's soul, he should take care of it in every way possible and make good for the good of his conscience. It's very sad to hear because he felt the need to act that way, even though he wasn't isolated. He had friends in the community, yet he found the need to act that way. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Derek turns on the television to catch a bit of the weather. The phone rings. Hello, Caroline. Hello, little brother. How are you today? Fine. How's mom? Ornery as ever, but she's preparing for her mid-morning nap, so she's no threat to anyone. How'd your doctor's appointment go? It was today, wasn't it? Yes, it went well. Well, what did he say? I won't get into it all, but the gist is that he stopped the medicine, and I need to approach my life with better care and not get involved with anyone else until I am dealing better with the changes. That's it. How do you feel about that? I agree with Dr. Lowry, at least in part. The part about dealing better with the changes. I need to seek out the best ways to think. I know you read the Bible all day. Is this what you mean? I should read other writers than just the Bible. I mean, to be a more well-rounded person. I read the Bible and that's all well and good, but maybe I need an additional perspective. The doctor didn't suggest this. I am now. How do you feel about not being involved with anyone? Does this mean charity too? No, charity knows me. It's just for new women, as if there are or might be new women. I don't like it, the elimination of possibilities, but I think it has to happen for me to be able to focus. I can't use a relationship to prop me up every time I need it. A good many people do just that. I don't want to be most people. Good. That's a good start. You will need to follow up with diligence and fortitude in order to succeed, and reliance on those who know you the most and love you in spite of it. Nice. But what do you really mean? Read between the lines, Derek. Everyone you know loves you deeply, including charity. Those who don't, don't. So getting to know others should be a primary concern, right? Just saying. Yes, but committing to any relationship might be a distraction. But if love is the answer to all ills, then the relationship process is the key to greater love. Derek, you're talking in circles and you're giving me a headache. Focus, focus. Your healing takes more than love this time, brother. 
I know you are right, Caroline. I just don't like having to do it. Well, no one does. But if you didn't have such love and support, I would say it would be much more difficult. And I'm not saying it will be easy. Now who's talking in circles? How are you and John? <sighs> Some days. You know what I mean. Gotta go. Love you. Derek hangs up the phone, then sits motionless, watching the weather. Charity sits at her terminal, editing the mayor's interview. Janet, the station manager, taps Charity on the shoulder. Charity removes her headphones. Yes? How's it coming? Good. Almost done. When you finish, could I see you in my office? Sure. I'll be right in. Charity puts her headphones back on and finishes. Come in. Sit. You'll need to. I'm sure you'll remember our falling out. Water under the bridge. Good. I'm glad you feel that way. So do I. And I brought you back for two reasons. One, because I thought you weren't done here. And two, because I needed you for a specific purpose. Now here's the thing. I'm retiring in six months. I'm not sick and I'm not being forced out. I'm just leaving for personal reasons. So I need to pick and groom a successor and I choose you. Wow. I believe you have a fire for radio, a passion for your job nobody else matches. Don't accept or deny, just hear me out. I have to sell it to the owners yet, so mum's the word. So keep your hopes down, enthusiasm high, expectations low, got it? Thanks, Janet. I don't know how I could ever repay you. You can start by posting that interview on time. Yes, of course. Thanks. Charity goes out to her car. She shuts herself in and... Yes, I knew it. I knew my time would come. Uh, but is this what I want? She goes back to her desk and files the interview, picks up her next assignment packet, and punches out. In her car, she dials Elena. Pick up, dear. Boy, do I have news for... Elena. Yes, Charity, but I'm about to board my plane, so make it quick. That fast, huh? Well, my boss, Janet, is retiring, and she picked me as a successor. How do you like them apples? Wow, Charity, that's tremendous. Since when? Just a few minutes ago. Do you think you can trust her to keep her word? She did can you once, you know. Water under the bridge. She has advanced me consistently since then. Besides, she has given me six months to learn more than I do now. Easy peasy. Okay, but keep your head up, kid. It's life, after all. Oops, gotta run. Love ya. Who else can I call? What, got no friends? I only need you, Elena. I'll call Marisol. Uh, later. Call that boy toy of yours. Are you still... What are you? That would take more time than we have. Anyway, have a good flight. Call me when you get back. Okay. Hello, Charity. To what do I owe this honor? Why so formal? Are you measuring your responses to me right away? Hi, Charity. It's you. Of course it's me, silly. How are you? Can't complain. But you still do, if I know you. Only to those who listen. Was that meant for me? Is that friendly of you? It is what it is. Where are you, Hughes? I'm walking to the falls. I needed a little meditating. You certainly have the time. You might as well use it productively. Why don't I pick you up or meet you there? I've got news. News? Like what? Nope. When I see you. Well, I'm almost there, so meet me with your news. I'll be there shortly. Charity pulls up at the falls, spots Derek sitting on a picnic table near the edge. Hi, stranger. How are you? Fine. How are you? Couldn't be better. That good, huh? What gives? Well, just a few minutes ago, my boss offered me the job of station manager when she retires in six months. Wow, that's remarkable, considering that only recently she wanted to fire you. I quit, Derek, remember? Oh, yes. Thanks. Anyway, she said she'll train me to learn whatever I'm lacking about running a station. You already have the broadcast part down pat. Thank you, Derek. Today I did my third interview of Mary, Mayor Montgomery. How many have you heard? All of them, as well as Supervisor Burlington and the leader of Local 818. Well, I'm flattered. Did you know that Councilman Edwards stole money from his re-election campaign? Who? You don't keep up with current events, do you, Derek? Not really. I live in a bubble. That's not healthy, Hughes. Governments pass laws every day that infringe on our rights and offend our sensibilities, yet you remain oblivious. I am aware of law and its origins in divine law. Am I overstating it by saying you pay attention to what is needful only and that you do your best? Yes, you hit it squarely on the head. Did you go see your doctor today? What did he say? A couple of things. We stopped the medicine that was doing me harm. Good. 
He said, in short, that I needed this time to regroup mentally, physically, and spiritually to regain myself and to not seek any new entanglements, and if I did, they may be detrimental to my progress. I like this guy. He says he likes you, too. He thinks that you've been good for me. Do you? Well, yes, of course. You hesitated. I wanted to take in all of your contributions and sift it with... You hesitated. There is no doubt you have been good for me. Caroline, Mom, Dr. Lowry, even Sandra believe you have benefited my life. But that just makes our current situation worse. We can't be together now, Derek. We are not suited to each other. In what way? In most ways. I am logical. You are illogical. I am grounded. You are free from strictures. I accept my emotions and you hide from them. So what you are saying is that a man with disabilities can't find any love in this society? No. Only if that man was actively working to overcome his problems and not hiding from responsibility. How do you figure moving forward and asking you to marry me was skirting my responsibility to you? If anything, it was stepping up. Derek, why do you think I said no? It wasn't because I didn't care for you. It was because you weren't ready. You couldn't support and you couldn't feel to the depths I needed. Your intrinsic worth, I don't doubt. Just everything else. The problem I see is that you don't accept yourself, and that is why you fail. Is this how you really feel? Yes. You have, how do I say it, the ability to bridge gaps, the ability to fathom, and great ability to see the unseen. You also have a tremendous desire to hide behind others in an attempt to shift the blame and responsibility on anyone and everyone, even God. But for all that, you could still have the world on a string. But you don't. I am getting better and resent you looking at my past instead of my future. Fair enough. Just because I feel sad about us breaking up doesn't mean I do away with all. Life goes on and I'm going to get back to what matters, to progress, whether we get back together or not. Well, that's good to hear. Not because I'm done choosing you, but because of all your possibilities potentially left unclaimed. But I don't buy it. Tell me the world, but do nothing, and you are back in the same boat as before. What will you do to prove your assertions true? What you see is a confluence of mental, physical, and spiritual ailments at work in me, and a preference to skirt the issue rather than attack and achieve. I have never heard such an accurate assessment of yourself from you. I am self-aware, and you haven't been listening. I have talked to other people with traumatic brain injury, and they describe a spectrum of symptoms, and not all of them suffer like you. Everybody's different. My injury was severe, with a coma, and many behavioral and cognition after effects. It's been my most significant event in my life. The most defining. Yes. I have spent the past three years trying to learn what I needed to be successful and failing miserably. That's not so. I should say intermittently. And now with you. I think you've done great things, you know? Not really. You are so hard on yourself. You are defined by what you do, and you have made friends, did small jobs for me, right? All the while exploring many ways to improve and exploring and committing to a relationship with God while battling all the symptoms and after effects of a damaging condition. I'd say you did great things. I guess. What is this spirit of condemnation? Isn't that at cross purposes to God's plan for you? Say yes once in a while, Derek, and your world will change. I just anticipate your rejection, so I am not prepared for praise. I rarely condemn you, Derek, and if I do, it's always for your own good. You must not have noticed. I have. I'm sorry for focusing on the negative. It's my default setting. It doesn't have to be. Can we go to the edge? I need to see the water. Sure. They walk to the retaining wall and stare at the water, rushing over a multi-level terrace creek bed. I love it when the water is so high. I don't mind your decision, you know, about us. But I have been without partners before, and it wasn't easy. You'll do fine. I guess. And so will you. I know. Thanks. What are your plans today, Hughes? I don't know. Perhaps I'll take my knapsack and march around the perimeter of the city seven times until the walls fall. A biblical reference to Jericho, huh? Tell me, Derek, at what stage did you abandon adult humor for mere childishness? Are you belittling me again? Me? Not. Because if you are, then I'm walking. Hear me? I'm walking. Charity waves her hand. Walk then, goofball. You miss me, don't you? No, you're always around. I miss us. I know. She gives him a hug 
and looks him in the eyes. Let me give you a ride. Anywhere in the city. Thanks. I'm all right. I'll go home soon, but not right now. Okay. Thanks for the chat. You're welcome. Charity leaves, and Derek stares at her car as she drives away. He turns back to the falls, looks at his watch, then pulls his phone from his pocket and calls his mom. Hello, baby brother. How are you? Just fine, thanks. I just met with Charity. How is she? Good. She is being promoted to station manager in a few months. That's great. Let's see. You want to talk to Mom, right? Working on your ESP again? Mom, it's Derek! Son, how are you? Thanks for calling. I, I get so few calls these days. I am fine, Mom. And how are you, really? Oh, I'm feeling my age these days, that's all. I thought 70 was the new 30. Oh, I'd kill to be 30. Uh, now, don't take that literally, son. You know that I couldn't hurt anyone for any reason. A trait you passed on to both Caroline and me. You were good students, weren't you? It's important that people do what is right. There's so much lawlessness and disrespect these days. People have lost their way. That's why you need to heal, so you can be a light, an example for others. I don't know. That's a burden that I shy away from. Mostly because I realize I am so imperfect. Oh, son, everyone's imperfect. Everyone's a, a hypocrite. Look at any world figure, from Jefferson to Margaret Thatcher to Martin Luther King Jr. They each have had some promptings that were impure, actions which were disordered, and each have managed to succeed despite his or her tendencies to, to do evil, to, to sin, to disappoint. Now, if you allow yourself to wallow in your self-pity, to allow yourself to, to use your failures in life as, as an excuse to not live properly and to not live up to your God-given abilities, and consequently to not fulfill your destiny, then that would be a shame and a pity. Mom. I'm just saying, son, you need to hear this. Didn't Christ say that to whom much is given, much will be required? Yes, Luke 12, 48. Ah, uh, you know the verse. But do you follow the word? Are you a hearer only, or do you walk the walk? Sometimes it's hard to do, just try. Oh, trying is fine if you are learning and applying with the goal of succeeding and triumphing. I know you are a good student of life, Derek, and that, above all, your heart is right with God and the world. And you are trying, and that is good. Now, accomplish. First little tasks, then progressively larger and and more complex tasks. Listen, son, this is a good model. I know, Mom. So, how goes your day so far? Good. I saw my doc, saw some friends, saw Charity just a few moments ago. What did your doctor say? He adjusted my meds and said to stay away from chicks. Derek, respect. Yes, sorry. No relationships for now. He wants me to take a break. Mm, very smart. Which is kind of why I called. I mean, to talk to you about relationships. Oh, really? Well, we should probably include the queen of relationships, incorporate her views. Caroline, pick up the extension. What? I'm busy. Come on. She picks up the receiver. Yes. Derek wants to talk about relationships in brief, and I thought, who better to assist him than you and me? Very funny, Mom. What would you like to know, Derek? Uh, mostly, how do you go about applying yourself to be ready when the time comes? Caroline? Well, you can fumble through life not knowing where your next blessing comes from, or you can steadily and persistently apply the lessons given by God and learn by contact and exchange with others, like diligence in prayer, diligence in following that prayer into action, that is decision in action. Decision to honor God in word and deed. So I need to act. 
But give me a verse I can remember. I can't remember the exact verse, but where Paul tells about a man honoring his wife as if she were her own flesh, and the way Christ treated all the women in his life with respect, that's the best I can do biblically. And you remember how your dad treated me, right? Hardly an argument that he started. And kind and gentle was the order of the day. It's in the looking and laughing and loving that you build a legacy of sorts, a repertoire of meaningful action. But you must decide, then act, and you will reap great rewards. Have we helped you? Yes, I think so. Good. Anytime, Derek. Bye. You go, son, and keep me informed, yes? Thanks, Mom. Love you. Derek puts his phone in his pocket and turns back to watch the falls. Charity goes home, pets her stuffed skunk, and sits down with a drink on the couch and dials her birth mother, Marisol. Hello, Charity. Long time no year. How are you? Oh, I called you last week. Seems like forever. Is it a crime to call my only living mother and play catch-up? You know you can call me any time. So what gives? Spill it. I guess I'll cut to the chase. Janet, my boss, is retiring in six months, and she is grooming me to replace her as station manager. How do you like them apples? Oh, congratulations. You deserve it, honey. What do you need to learn? Well, she is mostly a manager of sorts, so I would need procedural things. Protocols, policies, practices. The three Ps, I guess. Mother. Sorry, it struck me as funny. Does everything I do strike you as funny? Do you share my gaffes with the women at Mahjong Wednesdays? No, dear, you are not funny. You are just my little girl who got away and now is one of my friends. I see. Perhaps I overreacted. And I didn't get away. You gave me away, remember? Yes, and it still causes me pain to think of it. Mom, that was decades ago, and now you're right. I am one of your friends, but better than that, we are family. Why else would there be so much friction between us, ancient history aside? Oh, that's sweet. Thank you. So, how did your project go, your latest one? We were denied a week ago for funding, so now it's back to the drawing board, and maybe we can redesign, so it's better. Not major, then we can resubmit it. I'm so sorry. Why didn't you tell me last time we talked? I didn't want to bother you. Martyr. Well, I hope you can resubmit it. It would keep you busy, not Mahjong. Everything has its place. And everyone their time. Do you have enough time to learn what you need? Because you obviously need to learn a great deal before taking over a station manager. Mother? Yes, dear. I will be ready, and I will succeed. But will you give God the glory? Hmm, perhaps. But that is a matter for another day. Derek stands against the wall, looking at the falls. Suddenly, a woman comes up and stands beside him. He looks at her. Hi. Hi. Do you like them, the falls? Yep, always have. Are you from Amsterdam? I don't think I've seen you around. I would have remembered. Yeah, I'm a lifer. How about you? I'm originally from Kobelskel, but I've lived here a few years. It's not bad. Where else do you like to go? I mean out. I'm a homebody. Not much money. How about a cup of tea? On me. We could go down to the coffee shop and sit. Do you have a car? No. Yes. I mean, not with me. We can walk there together. What do you say? Well... Come on, show me around. Let me grab my bag. My name's Brittany. I'm Derek. Thank you for listening to our episode. Please join us again. The cast for this episode includes Jessica O'Connell as Charity Rodriguez, John Salerno as Derek Hughes, Laura Lee Whitlock as Caroline Peterson, Dorothy Domkowski as Sandra, Cheryl Charbonneau as Miriam Hughes, Kathy Ozick as Marisol Pollock, Barbara Nesnick as Elena Hutchins, Belinda Vare as Janet, Ness Stark as Brittany, Tobin Cash as Deacon Wallens, Anne Thane as Mayor Montgomery, and Homer Charbonneau as the narrator. Special music by John Mastermoro. Sound services provided by Spinner Productions, Amsterdam, New York.